make you feel like you your britches is too big for your for your you know that part that's a good thing you know if you can find a house like that that's awesome that's amazing because it is who god said you are that part it is it's his thumbprint on you mm -hmm. it's his nature in you that causes you to do and say the things that you are the type of personality that you have how you're able to draw people just like holy spirit drew each one of us that's all part of god's plan and his design mm -hmm. very good very good. um let me interject uh uh um ambassador put in here and i want to know if she can if she's willing to elaborate she says then do it unafraid and outside the church the church has lost the world's game mm -hmm. um Ambassador, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yes. Um, thank you for the space and time. Um, a lot of times the world, uh, the church rather, is not ready for what God has put on the inside of you because they're afraid. They're not, you know, like you said, uh, Pastor Tina was talking about the woman who crochets. Now, why is a crochet club not welcome in the church? All you're going to do is gather other women together who crochet and you're doing something for the body, why are they afraid of that? So sometimes you have to come outside. You know, the church is the place where we come to be fortified. We're supposed to come together to get our energy, our strength, what we need to go out into the world and do. It is not where we come inside and just settle there. No, you go inside, you get you get the training, the teaching, you get fortified, you get encouraged by your sisters, and then you go out in the world and take what God has given you to do outside because God wants to speak to all of his children. I say it all. He wants to speak to all of us, not just those who go to church. So what you do, your gift that you take outside will draw somebody in who is not saved, who is not yet come into the body. But if we just continue to be among ourselves in the building, then the world is going to go to hell in a handbasket and then God is going to hold us accountable mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is that God has given you to do, if the church is not ready for it, you find your space in your place because God has created one for you. When you get up every day, my constant prayer is, God, what is my portion? Get that. What is my portion in your kingdom's agenda? Because my portion is different from Minister Pebbles. It's different from Pastor Tennis. It's different from Prophetess Christie. But if I do my portion and they do their portion, at the end of the day, we can see God's kingdom be affected and the kingdom's agenda be done if everybody is doing their portion. Mm -hmm. But we can't all do the same thing. Absolutely. So sometimes sometime it's the church's loss. But you're going out there because you have a responsibility to God first. We try to have our loyalties to our church and to our pastors. But we have a loyalty to God first who put the gifts on the inside of us to reach his body. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you got to do it unafraid and just launch out into the deep. And do what God has called you to do. And your gifts will make room for you. Thank you for this time. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. So we thank God. We thank God for our um, Ambassador Lisa um, sharing that with us. And I love to do it unafraid part. Um, I remember being young in Christ and being afraid of the bishop. Being afraid of um, those who had offices. And I mean, I got saved at 21 right um at nine but submitted at 21 right so i was scared of them i didn't want to get caught outside of what they said we were supposed to be doing right <laughs> so i we, we wanted to have this this time to share because somebody might be in that place they might feel like oh i don't want to be out of order or you know i don't want to be deemed as if i'm a rebel right um I love rebellion. Yeah. I keep a little bit of it in my life. Well, you're also day. a prophetess. That <laughs> 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 <Get up> part. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not talking about Pastor Tanner or any particular pastor, but sometimes pastors are terrified of something they don't have any clue about, something they did not birth, something that they cannot control. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. No, I was going to say, don't forget the control part. They, if they can't control it, if Woo. they don't tell you how to move and do and be, Jesus. they don't want you moving and doing because they can't control that. But when I wake up every day, I submit myself to the Father. Come on here. Foremost. Yeah. 
And I know what he says go, and I do what he says do. And if that's sometime going outside of what is going on in the church, now I'm not going to be, you know, missing church if I can help it. But sometimes God say, I need you to go over there and minister to these people. I'm like, but I got a train to catch so I can be in church and Bible study. I've been in church and Bible study since day one. I don't have a testimony about being saved from a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. I've been in church since day one. So you're telling me I ain't missed no church in 60, 63 years. I can't miss one evening to go minister. That's what God wants you to do. So mm -hmm. we got yeah. to come out of these shells that people try to put us in. Uh, continue to pray for them because they only know what they know. That's it. That's it. And it's very good. And you know, some of our ministry gifts will be called to the church to help this church's structure to get the way that God would allow for it to operate, to flow. And mm -hmm. others will continue to do what it is that God has um, so that those that are missing out because of the structures that are set up, they won't miss out. God will not allow for them to miss out. So we want to we want to keep those things in mind that it's all about the love of God right all about the the love of god and what it is that he would desire right um prophetess christy you have something i do yes, um because i know it's 858 but <clears throat> and uh ambassador lisa said something that like triggered me when you're in the house know that god will use them to give you what you need Okay, so God has a um, God has a has a way of taking all things, <laughs> making all things work together, right? So I wish I had known. I can only tell from my my perspective this part. I wish I had known not to get frustrated and angry and feel a kind of way about what my leaders didn't know because they gave me what God required of them to give me to to the capacity that they had okay mm -hmm. to the capacity that they had sometimes sometimes you know as um ambassador was saying you gotta you gotta get to know God for yourself. That part. Not sometimes. All the time. You take the word, you study the word to get to know the Father, to know Him, know, know Him, intimately know Him, personally know Him. Right? So that as you grow and as you develop and as you mature. When it's time, that, and I just I just thought this in my head. I just heard this in my head. When it's time to bust the move, you'll know how to bust the move. Mm -hmm. And you won't be all in your feelings about it. And it won't be a bunch of bickering and back and forth. It won't be that. Mm -hmm. Okay? Just know wherever you are in life, you ain't never going to outgrow God. Never. But God will always use who you're with or who you're under to make sure you get the food that you need mm -hmm. That's good. so don't despise small beginnings don't despise okay well i've been you know i've been in this 10 years and so i know a little something mm -mm. god got a plan mm -hmm. god got a way mm -hmm. i'm just gonna say don't get stuck okay amen amen and that's good that's good because there's a um a season for everything right we don't want to go picking watermelons before they're ripe and mm -hmm. go eating stuff before it's ready and the same thing with those of us that are coming out of the world into the church um or those of us that got raised in church there's still a growth process right yeah. and when you become right strong enough to stand um the fivefold should be there to help you. Mm -hmm. And that's the season that we're in. That's where the church is at right now. Um, there is not a church that the fivefold is not trying to raise up in right now. <laughs> and when I say the fivefold, I'm talking about the five ministry gifts that are called to the body. Um, although they work all over the world, the structure in the church 
is under reconstruction for this reason because the people that are coming in people are coming in like like these covid babies right my grandson is a covid baby oh my gosh be quiet sit down somewhere how you one o'clock one, one years old telling me you happy like how are you talking to me already what are you doing right he's more advanced the things that he knows the things that he's doing people that are getting saved now they're not like we were <clears throat> i got saved in 99 all right um the people that i have that are coming in right now and some of y'all are on the line they are advanced <laughs> Why? Because they got A.R. Bernard online. They got T.D. Jakes online. They got mamas and papas all over the screen sharing with them and feeding them already. Right. Mm -hmm. And some of them are coming out of homes and coming out of backgrounds where they've been prayed for and they've been. But they just now have decided to submit. So they're not as a baby baby as we think that they are. Right. They're coming in with some footing. They're coming in with some knowledge already. So finding a pastor that understands that is not always easy, right? A lot of times, and I can say this as a pastor, a lot of times the pastors are the problem. <laughs> and we're going to move from that, amen. <laughs> because they're not prophetic. They don't have a lot of understanding. And they're trying to control and guard when they really should just be loving and watching people surpass them. But we're going to move from that, amen. Our um, ambassador said, don't get stuck, amen. So we... We thank God for the setting. Um, Minister Shondell, um, what else do you have for us on tonight? Anything? Um, just a final thing. So we um, we basically cover how to fulfill the individual purpose and impact the world. Everything that we said with our personal ministries and um, with the ministries in the church, them coming together and that's how we impact the world we're reaching people we're um sharing whatever our whatever our personal ministry is and reaching those who are lost no matter what it is just like you share with the young lady with the blanket that's a ministry where that person that whoever she gave that blanket to may not know the lord may not know jesus and that is that seed that's being planted for that person that receives it that mother that father that receives that blanket mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to get it an uh, opening and an entrance to know to know the Lord. Um, just one last thing when um, when I transitioned to a different church, and I kept telling, I kept saying to God, I don't fit here. I'm I'm, I'm I, I don't understand. Even though I didn't understand when I first started going there, I was like, Yes, I love the church. I love the people. But I feel strange. I don't fit here. But yet, in my being there, it is teaching me how to be free. Mm. How to be free. Um, you know, even being there, a uh, prophetic word came that literally said to me, you're different. Your ministry is different. And your ministry is for a different type of people. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. They the the word literally came that it's okay and Amen. don't stop what you're doing. Amen. And it just being in that going, you know, doing the transitioning and all, and it's like, okay, Papa, why am I here? Yes, that and made me totally realize that I'm not I may be there for them in some aspect, but no, I have you here for you because you have to learn. And you have to see that it's okay to be free. Mm -hmm. Amen. So in all that we do, I want us to remember that the goal is souls. Mm -hmm. The ministry is souls. It is all about souls, getting people to come to know, to know Jesus Christ as their personal savior. Mm -hmm. In all that we do, the goal is souls. Remember it's about souls. In all in all that we do in the fivefold and in helping others in everything that we do, it is about winning souls and teaching others the love of the, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's it. That's good. That's good. Amen. So we thank God. We thank God for the setting. 
um, you'll see in the chat, I put uh, the giving. So our, our giving platforms, we have a couple of different ways that you can give. As God leads you, um, give into the ministry. Um, God has us doing quite a bit. Our, our focus, we are um, a prototype, right? We are a house that uh, many can come into just the way that they are. Uh, we're a house that welcomes the fivefold. We welcome correction. We're looking for us to be restructured by God's hand, right? Um, very unorthodox sometimes, right? You might come into the house and a prophetic move might happen the whole service. And then sometimes we might have regular structure. It's whatever God says. We try our best to have, you know, that order that, you know, some might want us to have. But give into the house. Um, we've been able to tap into the community some more. And we have some that are, are beginning to join and come from around the doors, which is a blessing. Some are on the line on tonight. So we thank God for that. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have our minister Shondell's cash app there. Amen. And I, I want to urge you to give because she took the time to prepare herself on tonight. And um, she probably got fought all, all last week into this week, the week before that. Because you, cause we're busting things open. When we have conversations that are not had, that loose people, right? Mm -hmm. Hell tries to come against you, right? Let it do what it do, right? It's already defeated, you know, but it's going to come. So just know that it's going to come. Where did I learn that from? <laughs> My foundation, right? <laughs> so that is the transcendent experience that we have as we're growing in church, right? But when you become mature, you recognize what it is, you know what it is, you kind of know how to fight back right? You don't submit to it. You fight back against it mm -hmm. and you still show up tonight. Amen. So we thank God for that. And, um, we thank God for you, Minister, uh, Minister Pebbles. And I knew that I could ask her to do this and that it would go well. I didn't give her no structure. We just talked about it through a text real quick mm -hmm. and then God just took over from there. Amen. So we're, um, asking you to send the blessings and, um, just keep in mind that, God is restructuring. He's restructuring. So if you're an, a prophetess or you're an apostle or you're, um, I want to say, even a, a senior pastor of pastors, a bishop, know that the church needs you, right? Because look at all of these people that express tonight that they may or may not have been able to do what it is that God called them to do in a house of God. Evangelist Robina, who sometimes jumps on here with us, who helped to raise me in the Lord, would say, y'all holier than God. <laughs> That's what she would say. <laughs> Amen. So we want to just thank God. Um, we, we do have prayer on this same platform. Amen. Is um, This week we're in fasting. Amen. So this prayer at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Um so we want to welcome you. You're welcome to come on. If you want to come on and soak with us and come on and moan with us and you have the time, we're on here. If you don't have the time, pray for us um, as we are launching. God has us launching into different things and there's much warfare that comes with it, but it's so worth it. It's so worth it. Amen. When you see souls coming through and coming forth and people maturing and um, wow, you know, you can sit back and see the growth in the house and people not being afraid to walk out what God has outside and inside within the house. It's a blessing. Mm -hmm. And I believe that that is what God would have for today's church. Amen. And I'm going to close with, with just scripture quickly. I put it in the chat, Matthews five and 13. Um, I'm in a season of A.R. Bernard. I'm in a season of him. Prophetess Christy introduced me to him and I can't stop listening to him. Um, but this verse came alive through something that he said to me. He says, you are the salt of the earth. And this is Matthew 5 and 13. But the salt has lost, lost its savior. How can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. And when he shared it, he he said many times we don't realize that salt is meant to preserve, mm -hmm. right? It's not meant to just season so that it tastes well, but the ultimate use of it is to preserve. So we go into the world to preserve the holiness, 
to preserve mm-hmm. society, to preserve, like somebody said in the workplace that they was doing their ministry. Come on. That's what mm-hmm. God wants for you to be that safe place on the job, at your family reunions, at the Thanksgiving table, right? All around your Islamic community and, and, and. So mm-hmm. that God will have for you to be a beacon of light. Mm-hmm. Amen. So thank you for coming out tonight. And um, I love you, love you, love you. And y'all keep us in prayer. Um, we are fasting for God's guidance in the last six months of this year. Amen. And believing and knowing that he's speaking. Knowing mm-hmm. that he is speaking. Amen. He has great things for us individually and collectively. Amen. I love you. Y'all have a wonderful night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, God. Good night, God. God bless. Good night. God bless. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.